Hi, before I start this video, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who showed up for the live event I did. And thank you to Brenda, the Paracrypted Hunter, and Jax's Haunted Chit Chats YouTube channel for having me. And we had a great time. And if you want to check out that conversation and you missed it, I'll leave the link in the descriptions below. And I also recommend their YouTube channels and it was a lot of fun. Again, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to give you a quick explanation of what is going to be in this video. So first I'm going to just quickly talk about how I heard about cloaking and then a quick look at animals camouflaging in nature. Then I'm just going to give you the basic fundamental principles of quantum physics and how they would apply to invisibility and also how waves and particles interact with each other and the waves being either sound waves, light waves, or electromagnetic waves. And then a quick brief mention of dark matter. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Philadelphia experiment. And then finally, I'm just gonna mention entanglement. So just really brief, basic descriptions of these principles and how they could possibly apply to Bigfoot being able to dematerialize and seem to disappear in thin air. Hello, my name is Jenna Bosiger, and you're watching Cryptic Cryptids YouTube channel. On this episode, we're going to look into cloaking, which is something that's described by a lot of eyewitness reports when they encounter Bigfoot. Ron Moorhead has a book that he wrote called The Quantum Bigfoot, and it's about this very thing, about how Bigfoot seem to dematerialize, and he is the Ron Moorhead of the Sierra Sounds. So most everyone in the Bigfoot community know who he is. It's a great book that I recommend. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Now, I first heard about cloaking back, this is part of my research that I was doing, I had posted some videos of the stick structure and someone left a comment that said there's a lot of sasses cloaking there and I didn't even know what that meant at the time but he meant sasquatches cloaking and that's when I looked into the whole thing. And reports of Bigfoot's ability to cloak themselves isn't from a few random accounts cloaking or suddenly disappearing in thin air is common to Bigfoot encounters. And while it may sound strange and weird, it's repeated over and over by witnesses all over and throughout time. While it may sound impossible or lacking in credibility, let's just keep an open mind and look into how. How is it possible? So let's just assume that reports of the cloaking Bigfoot are true and look into whether or not there's any science that can explain cloaking. I found this example of an, a creature called a hawk moth, and it says that hawk moths zap bats with sonic blasts from their genitals, just to make it all the stranger. The tropical moths produce ultrasound in response to bat sonar, which may serve as a warning or jam bat echolocation. This all sounds really complicated. It's like quantum physics and, and all of this, but just like this hawk moth, this hawk moth doesn't need to be in a laboratory doing science to figure all this stuff out. It's just nature, it's just natural, and it just comes natural to them. Camouflage would seem like the most likely explanation for what's going on, but it actually doesn't match the encounters and the descriptions of what's happening because they literally dematerialize and vanish in thin air and there will even be tracks that just suddenly end. I don't think that's what's going on when it comes to cloaking. So are Bigfoot even capable of cloaking themselves? Is it possible for them to disappear and is there science behind cloaking in quantum physics? Quantum physics is the study of tiny particles. In quantum physics, nothing is solid. Things are made of tiny vibrating particles. 
that are invisible. And even empty space is not empty, but is also filled with tiny particles that are invisible. So in reality, what we see is an illusion because we think we see things as solid. We don't see them as particles vibrating, which is what the reality is. Everything you have ever touched, seen, or tasted, the air you breathe, the ground on which you stand, and the constituents of your body all consist of a type of matter that is only a fraction of all that is. In light of a series of unexpected discoveries over the past half century, astronomers and physicists have determined that 85% of all matter in the universe consists of a mysterious, invisible, and as of yet unidentified substance that's called dark matter. That's from Harvard. Quantum physics being the study of invisible forces and the invisible forces being the particles that things that make up things and what it also looks at is things that can affect particles and things that can affect particles are light waves sound waves and electromagnetic waves now the unified field theory tries to combine gravity and electromagnetism into one theory in an attempt to describe all the fundamental forces and relationships between elementary particles, wave particle duality, because energy usually comes as a wave. Quantum physics is saying that things are made up of particles, vibrating particles, and everything vibrates at a different frequency. Somatics. The geometry of sound, the shape of sound. This guy invented what you do is you put sand or salt on a plate of some sort. And when you make a, like a sound, you hit a note for every note, the sand is arranged from the vibration of the sound into these designs. They're like, um, sacred geometry or they look like crop circles and i wonder if there could somehow be messages decoded in them like that somehow so that's all very interesting just proving the reality that sound can affect the particles what about electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves oscillate between magnetic and electric and they generate fields. Philadelphia experiment. We don't know for sure if this is true because it seems more like it's been a cover up. There was a book written called The Philadelphia Experiment by Bill Moore. And it says, quote unquote, presumably if a vessel could be projected into another space or energy continuum through mistake or design, it might also be possible that its occupants could encounter entities on the other side of the curtain of invisibility, shrouding contiguous but non-tangent worlds. It is intriguing to conceive the possibility that an experiment spo sponsored by the U.S. Navy may have accidentally managed to pass through a doorway into another world. Now, Vanguard comments... Peter Kelly has an interesting theory which states that the magnetic field gives matter its form while the electric field contains the information which determines the characteristics of the mass. Peter says that the magnetic field can be suppressed to allow access to the electric field. When this occurs, the electric field can be reprogrammed. The magnetic field is then increased while the character electrical field is maintained. This then brings about transmutation. The Philadelphia Experiment Operation Rainbow Project. Using frequency generators and copper, the experimental vessel was intended to sail into the river invisibly using strong EM fields. The ship began to glow a bright green color at first 
then a little yellow, then it finally looked very blurry, like a heat mirage or gasoline evaporating, and then it almost vanished completely from our sight. However, we were still able to see the large wake it was leaving behind as it sailed south down the river. We could see it fade in and out several times until it was too far away. About six hours later, the Eldridge returned to the Philadelphia Naval Yard in a state of complete pandemonium. We heard men screaming and complaining that they felt like they were on fire. At that point, we knew Tesla had invented and was very close to perfecting ultimate weapon of war, optical invisibility, electromagnetic illusion of invisibility. In order for Bigfoot to use electromagnetic waves, he would need to be able to create an electric field. He could do that by creating static electricity. Static electricity can damage electronics. And that's maybe something that's always been reported with UFOs and sometimes Bigfoot when your electronics stop working. So did you know that the human's heart magnetic field can be measured up to several feet away from the body? You just can't see these things, but they're there. And in that sense, we really do live in an illusion. And we're so stuck on needing to see things with our own eyes to prove the existence. But we're just learning every day more and more that our eyes don't see. Well, they don't see 85% of matter, apparently. And electromagnetic waves, you can also see them as the aurora borealis when the solar rays hit the Earth's magnetic field. Quantum field theory. This is the law of everything. It underpins particle physics and describes the theory that all forces between particles are carried out by other particles, that all forces basically are particles. It governs the way that all matter interacts from light entering your eye and the electrons exiting, orbiting an atom to the structure of DNA. Entanglement. Spooky action, as Einstein called it, is when entangled protons can have an instantaneous cause and effect on each other over vast distances. The observer changes the observed. Quantum physics tells us that nothing that is observed is unaffected by the observer. That statement from science holds an enormous, powerful insight. It means that everyone sees a different truth because everyone is creating what they see. Yes, and also something weird. When you look at something, the the act of observing affects the position and energy of electrons. So classic physics says, you know, if two things aren't literally touching, they can't really affect each other. That's not the case because of the space between, the particles between, and the entanglement. Quantum entanglement. In quantum physics, entangled particles remain connected so that actions performed on one affect the other, even when separated by great distances. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And I appreciate your support. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. I'm so excited about my next video. But again, it's a topic that probably has zero searches on YouTube about the science behind how chameleons and octopus change their skin color and into patterns and different colors. It's so amazing. I also learned a new word that I'm going to be including in that video, which is crypsis. And it's all about animals that are difficult to detect and the methods they use and the scientific sort of explanations behind those types of things. It's really amazing and really fascinating, but again, let's be real. I don't know how many people are going to be searching for Crypsis. I'm making that video because I want to know about it, I, and I just think it's interesting and fascinating. And then maybe after that, I'll try to think about maybe more about what the audience might be interested in, as opposed to, I guess, just what I'm interested in. 
Thank you. Bye.